following interview was conducted with Thomas Spurgeon, uh, Bachelor of Science, Industrial Management, 1961, from Purdue University, for the Purdue U University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, December 18, 2008, in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank nice you. I'm tell delighted us, to be here. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years. Oh, my goodness. That's such a long time ago. Uh, but that goes all the way back to 38. Okay. And I was born in Seymour, Indiana. Uh, lived there for eight years. And then to, moved to Columbus, Indiana. Okay, you went to grade school and high school there, I gather, did you? In or Columbus. Right? Colum oh, in Columbus. In Columbus. Okay. Yeah, I only went through the um, second grade in uh, Seymour. Okay. But they had a unique program in that uh, they started you for the full year in kindergarten at age three. And so it took me three years to get out of kindergarten. <laughs> That's a claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? I have a younger sister, eight mm -hmm. years my junior. Okay. And there's just, just the two of us now okay. with both parents uh, having gone on. Okay. Tell us a little about high school. What some of your activities and uh, orgs and teachers and things in high school, what was that like? Oh, this has been in Columbus, Indiana. Right? In Columbus, Indiana. Right. That was an exciting time. It really was because Columbus uh, high school, and there was only one at the time, whereas there's two now. The, the high school was built for 600 students, but had over 2,000. Wow. So what we ended up doing was it was very much like going to college in that there were five different buildings. And so you'd have a class in this building and then a class in that building. And if, if you had above a C average, you didn't have to go to study hall. So you might have a class at eight and not have another one until 10 or whatever. Uh, at the time, we also had uh, a very small gymnasium, and the community went together and uh, built a 7,500-seat gymnasium that was the envy of all. Okay. And I got to play uh, on the team my junior year, and that was the first year. And I think there was so much excitement and enthusiasm, we went all the way to the Sweet 16. and. Um, I have the mm, negative distinction of having to guard Oscar Robertson. He scored 26 points against me, and we lost the game by four points. <laughs> That's not so, too bad. So, yes. <laughs> but in, in high school, I was involved in many activities, um, eight letters, uh, athletic letters, graduated valedictorian in my class. Uh, so it was just a fun, fun time. Right. And were there any other athletic, do you mean basketball, were there any other sports that you participated in? Football and track. Okay. How'd the football team do? The football team uh, won the conference. Uh, and I, um, I, don't, I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I was honored to be uh, first team all conference uh, safety man. So it was, it was a good time, yeah, as I said. Very good, very good. Then uh, tell us about college and, when you, and after you graduated from high school, you came to Purdue. Uh, thought I was going to go to Indiana, uh, had a scholarship from Hanover, but for some reason ended up at Purdue, and it was a, a great decision. Came to Purdue uh, to major in aeronautical engineering because I wanted to be a test pilot. So Air Force ROTC, aeronautical engineering, and after my first year here, um, I flunked the eye phys the vision physical uh, for flying. And that was just a, a big disappointment to me. Oh, yeah. So uh, I, I lost my interest in um, aeronautical engineering and went into industrial engineering because my father was in manufacturing and that I understood that. It seemed like the thing to do. Um, and then uh, Academically, as, as we moved on, uh, Purdue then developed an in industrial management program for uh, undergraduates. Prior to, prior to that, it had been for graduate students only. Uh, also, the, um, the school had a, a minor in industrial engineering. So that just seemed to all go together, and so uh, I switched over to that. Okay. What was college like? What was the campus like and your, some of your professors and activities and things? Tell us a little about that. Okay. Were you in a fraternity? And uh, I was in a fraternity, Phi Gamma Delta. Uh, um, at that time, uh, the campus was only 18,000 students. Uh, Saturday classes were big. Everybody 
uh, went to Saturday classes. And I can remember taking 17, 18 credit hours, but because of labs, uh, we could well be in class 30 some hours a week. So it was um, it's a heavy schedule. Heavy schedule. And um, I was, was active not only in the fraternity, but other activities was Skull and Crescent, Gimlet, um, and that was the uh, result of having been senior football manager. And senior football manager was another great time consumer. But uh, what did, did that entail? And how did you didn't play? Then you didn't play when you were here. No, okay. no, I was just a little guy. And those guys on the football team, they were really big, <laughs> really big. But I went through the management ranks, uh, being the senior manager. We um, we took care of of uh, practice, making sure that all the equipment was in the right place. A in those years, we were also responsible for security. Uh, security was a big thing, and only certain people could get in. And we had m other managers posted uh, so that people couldn't watch with binoculars and so on and so forth. Uh, it also involved um, planning the trips where we would, we would have to coordinate the uh, police escorts, the buses, the hotels, the meals. Uh, we worked with uh, a guy named Pop Doan uh, to I exchange tickets him. back and forth uh, between the schools and, and the uh, ticket money. And then we were also responsible for taking the players' tickets when they offered them to us, and we'd go sell those for them so they could have the money from them. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure that was legal, but that's one of the things that we sure. did. How did the team do during those times? Who was the coach at that time? Jack Mollenkoff. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jack uh, Mollenkoff. And of course, six, beyond, well, they went to the Rose Bowl in 67. Right. Which was after, after that was they after. graduated. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> the, the team was like eight and two, I remember, for two seasons and just missed winning the Big Ten Conference, so didn't get to go to the Rose Bowl. But everybody, as you mentioned, was so excited in '67 right. when we got to go. There weren't as many. Well, there weren't as many bowl. You know, isn't it at that time if you had to be the top of the Big Ten just to go to the Rose Bowl, there was only one that you could go. That's right. That you, that's Very few bowls. To, yeah. Probably, guys, eight to ten. Yeah. Would have been all. Okay. But being being the manager was really a great experience, and I, I think helped me in later years. Sure. What sort of transportation did you have to earn? Did they go, uh, did they fly any place or? Back in those years, it was Ozark Airlines and it was DC-3s. Uh, and so we'd put the first string on one plane, the second string on another plane and split the third string. Not as many <laughs> players went, but you know, there was always the fear. If one of those planes go down, we still have to have a team to play right. and we would have never played a game, you know. <laughs> and, and then you filled out each of the planes with what we called the back slappers. That was like Kirby Risk, which is a familiar name around here. Kirby never missed a game. And one of the responsibilities of the senior manager was to make sure that Kirby got back on the plane to get home. <laughs> <clears throat> oh dear, the team didn't do too badly. No, um, the team was a good team. Yeah, that, that was back in the era of Lenny Dawson. Okay. If you, if you remember that remember name, he was a quarterback. Right. Ross Feetner and Bernie Allen. We had good teams. Where did the, uh, then you just used the field house because Malenkoff didn't exist at that time. It did no. not. So you, was that the, the field houses where the uh, equipment was? practiced outside. You practiced outside. Yeah, but the equipment was inside. Yes. Right, okay, and you used Ross Aid. Mm -hmm. Then after, after commencement, what came next? Is that when you went on to graduate school? No, uh, I was, uh, I flunked the Air Force flight, uh, flight physical, but I then went into the, the Army. And, uh, uh, Army had, ROTC? Army or? ROTC, so okay. I had two years of Air Force, two, two years of Army. So when I graduated, uh, I went uh, on active duty. And uh, the military was important to me while I was at school. I was cadet colonel, chief of staff, uh, scabbard and blade, uh, Purdue Order of Military Merit, daughter of American, Re American Revolution, outstanding cadet. So, so it was a big deal. And so I went, went in the service to be there a long time. And uh, in those years, I was in a very unique uh, kind of outfit in that I was a nuclear weapons officer. And my job was to 
and a super secret underground base keep warheads, nuclear warheads. And back in those years, we would have to test them every six months to make sure they worked. Whereas today, uh, they never test them. Once they build them and assemble them, they're ready to go. That must have been a challenge to test them when they're yes. considering they're not doing it today. <laughs> yes, we would have to totally disassemble them, uh, clean them from the spalling of the uranium, <coughs> excuse me, then put them back together and put them back on the shelf. Wow, boy, that's a big responsibility. They kept their eyes on us all the time. Yes. <laughs> I imagine, right? You were just uh, in, <coughs> in, the, in the States, the U.S., primarily? I spent some time in Germany, mm, okay. uh, but it was a limited time. I was only there three months, but there to do inspections. But I spent three and a half years in the military. And then when I, when I got out, I had to apply to be released, but I did that so that I could go to graduate school. That, and then, then and I came. And then when you got out, is that when you went to, you went to Indiana? Indiana University. Okay. All right. All right. Were you married at that time? I was. Okay. I, I was married while I was in the service, married my Purdue sweetheart. You met her here at Purdue? At Purdue. We, we went together at Purdue for a couple of years, and then after I was in the military for a year, we were married. Okay. What was, what was her major? What school was she in? Well, she was in um, science school, okay. and she majored in uh, sociology, uh, came out of school and became a uh, part of the personnel team for the William H. Block department store in Indianapolis. Very nice. And while there, uh, lived with my grandmother. So the two of them had the opportunity to get well acquainted. <laughs> Working into <clears throat> the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so then, uh, what was your career path on following the Purdue degree? Then what, uh, after you got out of the service and got your graduate work, finished at IU, what was next? Uh, well, I, I just want to add that while I was at IU, Good. they approached me as I came in and asked me to join the staff. So um, I became the associate director for business placement. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, it was our responsibility to um, invite in 670 companies who held 10,000 individual interviews uh, within the business school uh, there at Indiana. And uh, as a part of that, I taught uh, personal adjustment to business, which was a one hour credit course required of all seniors. And uh, it was my responsibility to help them understand how to go about evaluating companies for employment, um, how to write resumes, how to go through the process of interviewing and so on. And there was a, a lot of personal satisfaction in seeing like yeah. some uh, of the graduates go off and do well. Right, exactly. Did, um, what was the job market at that time? Those the job days? market was reasonable. Mm -hmm. It was reasonable. That's a lot of recruiters to handle. That's oh, yes. a big responsibility. <coughs> yeah. Then handle the students and get them all scored away mm -hmm. and line them up for their interviews and things of the, before the computer could help a little bit with that, right? That's before the computer. <laughs> right. Oh, and then after, well then, did you left IU and uh, what I came left next? IU, <coughs> excuse me. I was fortunate uh, to be approached by um, a well-known Hoosier at the time, a guy named J. Irwin Miller, who was uh, chairman and CEO of Cummins Engine Company. And he invited me the opportunity to come in and be his assistant for a short while before going on then within the Cummins organization. So I did that and um, it, it was a great deal of fun. It was, it was about the time that he was the national campaign chairman for Nelson Rockefeller's bid for President of the United States. So that added a Another little excitement dimension. to it. At the same time, he was in the process of having built in the city of Columbus uh, a nationally ranked uh, golf course uh, that he then donated to the city. So th those were all, all fun times. And oh, I spent uh, 12 years with Cummins. Okay. Did this, and the company grew. And you, did you keep working for him <coughs> or associated no, with him I only, the whole time? No, I only worked for him for 14 months, if I remember right. Then mm -hmm. I went into the organization mm -hmm. and had various jobs there. Sure. Okay. 
And then uh, what, what came next? Then you left there and went somewhere else? Or? I did. I, Cummins, uh, while I was there, assigned me the opportunity to head up one of their wholly owned subsidiaries. And I had the experience of uh, running that for three years and then selling it. Uh, but I had the taste of what it was like to run your own company. So uh, I came back into Cummins for another three years, but all during that time was eager to find an opportunity where I could acquire a company or some portion of the company. So I eventually did that. Okay. Went with a, a small company out in Kansas called Got. Few people have heard of Got, but they know Got because when you go to the ball games, you see these big orange coolers down on the bench. Well, those are Got coolers, and so. Um, Which now is in Gate, it handles the Gatorade, right? That's right. And Gatorade was one of our big customers. <laughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. I was there six and a half years, and during that time, was able to grow the company six and a half times, and no acquisitions, but we just sold more product and more product, um, and that was exciting, and it, it got to be so good, excuse me, <coughs> we were doing so well that, it, that we decided to take the company public. So we took the company public, and that was a good venture, and then several years later, uh, sold the company at Rubbermaid. And so today, all those orange coolers and other products we made are all part of the Rubbermaid trademark. Okay, sounds good. And did, did, did very, did extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, let's turn a little bit to the Board of Trustees. You were, you're the, one of the alumni representatives. I right? am. Okay. And uh, talk about, a little, you're on a couple of the committees. Can you tell us a little bit about the you know, work with the committees that you are on for the board? Okay. Um, I'm on the Finance Committee. Uh, and I chair the Audit and Insurance Committee. Um, the Finance Committee, as the entire trustee body, really has the responsibility to make sure that uh, we're financially stable and able, um, that uh, everything associated with the funding is done properly, uh, and then if, uh, if we're in need of funds, uh, it's our responsibility to see where we can find those funds, be they uh, personal contribution, be they the state uh, assessments, and so on. The, the audit and the insurance committee is one where um, we actually uh, supervise the audit of the state, of the university, and of that Finance Committee to make sure they're doing their job. The Insurance Committee um, portion of, of it is um, to protect our assets, but at the same time to provide the proper insurance uh, for all the staff, faculty and staff. Right. Right. So it's a process of um, understanding what's needed, uh, obtaining the proposals, and the quotations for that, selecting, and moving on. Okay. For the researchers, um, if you clarify how the alumni representative, how do, how does that come about? I'm thinking of when they see this in the in the uh, re, uh, in the video, just to clarify that, that would help them a little bit. Okay. Yeah. The um, the alumni representatives, and let me just Go ahead, digress momentarily Good. and say there are ten uh, trustees, three of whom are alumni six of whom are appointed by the governor, and one is a student uh, representative, also appointed by the governor. Okay. Now, the three alumni trustees are uh, come to that post through an election of all the alumni. Uh, the alumni board of directors uh, put together a slate and then that slate is published uh, to all alumni, and they in turn vote. And um, I now have gone through that process twice. I'm on my second term. Uh, the other two alumni trustees, uh, gee, one has been there uh, approximately 12 years. The other one's been there 14 years. Okay. 
And then there's a uh, after it's a term is for three years, and then you, you have to be reelected. Is that uh, that's correct? That's correct. Okay, alrighty. And if you're a governor appointee, you have to be reappointed. After it's same for th three years. Yes. Then. Right. Okay. And of course, the current chairman is Tim McGinley. Tim McGinley. Yes. Right. Did you know? Had you known him before? Met him before? Well, interesting. Uh, you you had asked me earlier. I I was in a fraternity at Purdue, Phi Gamma Delta, and Tim and I were in the house at the same time. So we go back, uh, way back, uh, <laughs> it's 40 sort of some nice. years. Sort of, that's sort of nice though. Baby. What goes around comes around. Isn't that interesting? Right. <laughs> um, strategic plan. That's the new one, the new synergies. You make a comment on that? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm excited about that. that. Sounds good. Uh, right. and, and if I may, I, I'm just going to drop back um, a couple of yards and, t and talk about the previous strategic plan. Good point. Uh, and as we, as we talk about presidents that were here, um, Hansen, Beering, uh, able presidents, but as times changed, it became necessary that uh, Purdue reevaluate some of the things it was doing or not doing. And I think that under the leadership of uh, Martin Jiski, that was an era of that. Uh, and so what came out of it was really a, a thrust toward research uh, by the, the building of the assets that we needed to be more than we were in research. I think that the new strategic plan is taking really what was given from the previous era and now are moving on. And uh, I, I would say there's probably um, three major foci uh, of the, the new strategic plan um, and the cornerstone of that being student success. Uh, and when we talk about student success, uh, you know, some of the things that, that, that measure that are the graduation rate, retention rate, um, and, and diversity among the student body and the, and the faculty and staff. A uh, second element of the new strategic plan is discovery. And there we have the basis of the research bringing forth discovery. but. It's, it's more than just discovery. It's, it's taking those discoveries and adapting them to benefit um, people, society, uh, the overall economy, uh, to bring uh, greater attention to Indiana. Uh, the third leg of uh, the strategic plan is global. And what what the plan is seeking and, and thus what Purdue is seeking to do is to bring uh, stronger global credentials uh, to the students and, and to the school. Uh, and, I, and if I may, just, okay. you know, one of, to me one of the important things is uh, we're a land-grant institution. Uh, we're an Indiana State University and uh, we have a responsibility and that responsibility of course is education. And how, how can we provide more education, or excuse me, education to more and uh, the highest of quality of, of education? I think that um, the trustees are, are facing a challenge uh, to make that happen, but at the same time to, as we evolve, we being in this case Indiana, um, as we involve, evolve, how do, how do we take uh, Ivy Tech, how do we take um, the other Purdue locations and fold those into making education available to more young people? And uh, we're working diligently on that. That's both an opportunity and also a big challenge. Mm -hmm. All right. Working very closely with the um, Indiana Commission for Higher Education, and uh, I, I think we're making progress, but we've got a long way to go. It's a challenge. That's but it's an ongoing thing. Then, mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the orientation of the board. How do they have any? Tra uh, when someone comes on the board, is there any sort of an orientation to new people? Uh, do they uh, give you some, you know? 
comments or things of that sort when, you, when you're a new person on the board? There, there is a formal orientation program. Good. Uh, and that orientation program starts with the chairman. Uh, and then uh, a great deal of it is provided by the president uh, herself. And in my case, it was Martin Jiske, you know. Hit, uh, and we, we actually sit down uh, for a couple of days and it, it involves um, strate strategic plan, the programs, meeting with uh, deans, uh, touring the university, uh, going to some of the other locations. Uh, I, I think it's rather inclusive. Yeah, it sounds uh, very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Then some of the your goals and objectives, any comments on the accomplishments on the board as you work through them? Any particular points or just sort of working with the board on, on all, all their uh, responsibilities? Right. You know, yeah. it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a challenge. And we we kind of have to watch the line right. in that we don't want to micromanage management because after all, the, the, the primary responsibility of the trustees are to ensure um, not only adequate but, but quite good leadership at the university. So we're involved a great deal with, with the president. So our, our challenge there is, is to make sure we don't, pardon the expression, get in our hair, but at the same time uh, give her our direction uh, allow her the latitude and, and help lead the university to where we want to be. In other words, to resolve those three issues right. I mentioned earlier. Right, right. There was a lot of work that went into the cheek plan, and it's, it's very good, very well thought out, and uh, those things take a lot of time to really put in place, and then once, it, once it's in place, to move it forward and, and ch evaluate it. You know, having been here with the one previously. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, pl the plan becomes an evolution. That's right. Um, and this plan is really an evolution of the last plan. But it will also, it's a, it's, it's a five, six year plan. And it's going to evolve during those five or right. six years. As a, as a plan should. I mean, it's not in concrete or whatever, yeah. right. The budget <clears> is another thing that you're, people that you're involved in. And then speak a little bit about diversity too, which is one of the things in the strategic plan. Right. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about diversity. Uh, I, I would have to share with you that uh, I'm of the old school. And so uh, through, through the years, this diversity is, has been a real eye opener and so on. And I would have to say that whether we're talking Purdue or whether we're talking the United States, we're, we're talking about a cultural evolution. Correct. And so it's, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think if we look at, at Purdue over the last, I'm going to say, almost 10 years, uh, we have made some real strides in diversity. Uh, and although this may not seem, seem like much, but all the way from, from building a black cultural center to um, the metrics uh, among the, the faculty and the staff and so on. However, a disappointment is uh, the diversity among the student body. Now, depending upon how you want to count, uh, I mean, so, some people can go so far as to say, uh, well, let's look at the international enrollment. <clears throat> Purdue has over 5,000 students, ranks second in the nation among public schools for that. But when we get over to African Americans, that's, that's where we just haven't really come on yet. And as, as one of the trustees, but I, I really, I think I can speak for all the trustees, we're very concerned about that. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're attempting <clears throat> to evaluate that, understand it, and put together whatever programs we need uh, to do better there. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the areas um, that, that I'm excited about in that regard uh, is Science Bound, uh, a program in Indianapolis uh, where students uh, raise their hand, students are selected, and they go into uh, a program of, of science 
uh, with Purdue leadership their senior year, junior year, and so on, in high school, so that they begin to understand what that's like, and hopefully uh, continue to foster their interest to the point where they come to, come to Purdue. Right. Yeah. And with some scholarship assistance, uh, that, that program is off to a good start. Right. And there are some students here already that yes. are in the program, which yes. is really nice. This, really this, first is, ones. this is the second year. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about giving back. Uh, you have been very helpful along that line to the university. Well, <clears throat> and that's key. Researchers want to, you know, they think about it, well, I'm, I've gone on and I've done something, but giving back, the campaign for Purdue and, and others that have, Vision 21 was before that, mm -hmm. so it's it's been picked up ever since Dr. Hansen, I think, started the presidential council, the President's Council, and yes. it's moved forward much, at a much greater speed in the last number of years, especially with the campaign. Right. Well, um, there's my giving and there's, there's the giving of everyone. Sure. Uh, I, um, once I left Purdue to this day, I've moved 16 times. And it was only in my last move to Illinois that I was back in the neighborhood of Purdue and able to do some things and, and become involved. And gosh, I really missed that. Um, Purdue was very important to me at the time I was here. Um, Did my, you not, excuse me, not participate with the alumni chapters where you were located? Did you participate in some of those? Uh, I did not. Oh, okay. I did not. Because the alumni chapters 30 years ago aren't like they are today in terms of numbers, okay. in terms of the um, uh, influence behind uh, everything. So <clears throat> uh, coming back um, into the area and coming, having the opportunity to come back over, then, well, I'm going to digress a second. One of, the, one of the important things to me when I was here was my fraternity. And it's been amazing to me of how that has lasted through the years. And we had a kind of a fraternity motto, and it, and it simply said, Phi Gamma Delta is not for college days alone. And I, I remember repeating that, but it didn't really mean anything. But once I got out, uh, all, all of the times I have been with my pledge brothers over the years, I've worked with them, I bought a house from one, I mean, we, we've been close. Uh, that, was, that was my only contact uh, along with the Purdue alumnus. So then when I came back, ah, the opportunity to be in Lafayette from time to time, uh, to be a spectator at the sporting events, so on, to be in some of the activities. I think that, um, for a lot of people, they feel that same love and that, you know, somebody may say, guys, love? Well, yes, it, it is a love. Right, it is. Uh, because of uh, what Purdue helped you form in, in the formative years of, of your life, uh, the education that we, that we receive and so on. As I um, look at people like my son, uh, other sons, other daughters, you know, gosh, I, I'm hopeful that they can experience those same things. So therefore, when the university says, can you help, um, it's hard to say no. Uh, but at the same time, you, you attempt to put it in balance right. with, with other things. Correct. Uh, but I think, uh, particularly with, with the Jisky era, and, and also before that, but uh, I, I think Purdue goes about asking for money in the right way. Uh, you, I have never felt an arm twist. Uh, I have felt um, a culture of achieving understanding of why we need it, what it can do. And then I think Purdue does an exceptional job of, after the gift, of demonstrating over time what it has done, right. so that you can feel a little Even satisfaction. More input. That's yes. right. Exactly. Good <clears throat> point. Yeah, very good point. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, 
you're talking about your fraternity, and I was going to you kept that on and been very active in that and gotten some awards and things from from that from that association, um, and uh, different things over time. Have you not been your involved well, with the fraternity? Yeah, I, I have not really received awards from from the fraternity. But I have as a result from the, of the university, right? Uh, but you know when. Um, one of my pledge brothers is, is particularly close to me. Uh, and here we've lived in different parts of the country over the years, but yet we talk to each other every two weeks. And we, we always made a, a, a promise to one another, uh, as we get up in years, uh, if we have some other home, we want to live in the same town. So we, we each have built a home one block from one another <laughs> <laughs> it came around. Didn't it, it came around. <laughs> it came around. Yes. Um. <laughs> but speaking of honors and awards, I do want to ask a couple of things. One is the Distinguished Pinnacle Award from the President's Council, and the other one that you just received in October from the Alumni Association. Yeah. And I, I think I mentioned that I, I was there that evening, and that was very nice to see. Well, that, that was very special. Very special indeed. Uh, having served. Um, on the Alumni Association Board of Directors. The Alumni Association is, is very um, important to me. I think it's very special. Um, and that's, that's why I, I gave money uh, to the new facility, right. the Alumni Center. Uh, and so when, when they choose to uh, recognize me for not that, but several things, that, that was very special and the um, the other two individuals that night uh, to be honored along with them. Oh, my goodness, it was very special. How did you happen to hear about it? Sometimes I ask people that, and they, they <laughs> I get different reactions. Well, sometimes I sort of sense it, but other times, so. Well, I, w I was honored to get a, a very nice communique from the president. And she uh, she wrote me a letter and identified it and uh, uh, asked my willi willingness to accept it and so on <laughs> and be there. I'll be there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the Pinnacle Award, too, that you received. Yeah. The, the Pinnacle Award... From uh, the President's Council. Yes, is, is a real delight. And mm -hmm. Great recognition. But, um, as I said earlier, I think, I think Purdue goes about their recognition in, in a good way. They don't really make a big deal out of it, yet you're, you're recognized. Right. And the, the key, as I mentioned before also, is the fact that they come back and, and tell you again and again. Um, my, um, the golf facility. Uh, I don't know how many times uh, I will be in some event meeting and uh, uh, that'll, that will be mentioned. And that's very satisfying. It's also very satisfying to see things like uh, uh, our women golf team to finish second and fourth the last two years right. in the NCAA championship. Right. Uh, the men uh, are coming on, but they're not quite there yet. It's very special, and it, it goes right through you, and it, it means a lot. It really does. It's that personal thing that keeps, it keeps coming back to you mm. that as you look out. Right on. There, there you go. Right on. <laughs> um, the uh, you've been, you've served on a couple of university committees. Well, you're you're on the athletic advisory committee, the Purdue athletic advisory committee, right. and also the uh, we were on the campaign for Purdue steering committee. So you kept involved, and that was even before you were on the board. On the board, is that correct? That's uh, correct. Committee. Okay. That's correct. And then, as I said earlier, the alumni association board. Sure, and I was right. on the executive committee there, and I chaired the uh, uh, task force to write the strategic plan for the alumni association. Mm -hmm. All fun things. Right. Um, so talk about teaching. You, you mentioned this earlier that you did some at IU, but you, you st are you still doing some teaching at Bradley as well? Uh, I'm, I'm a lecturer at Bradley, uh, and I, I also serve on the Board of Trustees for Bradley University. Okay. Chair their audit committee. I don't know why I keep getting on <laughs> audit committees. Um, years ago, uh, when I was with the Gott Corporation I mentioned earlier, I was on the uh, Board of Trustees for Southwestern College and actually, uh, that's a Kansas school, uh, actually taught a course there uh, every fall semester. Good. Uh, 
then, uh, as we said, lecturer at Bradley. And I... Are you still doing that? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and I just enjoy um, being with the students, right. uh, attempting to share some experiences and insights. And I have, um, I've lectured now twice here at Purdue's Cranert School. Uh, and have it's, a, that's another type of giving back, right? Sharing and and particularly working with the students, so it's excellent. All right. How about um, your family? Did your children? Any of your children come to Purdue? No, hmm. no. I, we, I have, I guess, kind of a unique situation there. Uh, my wife and I chose uh, to adopt, and um, I, I think the Lord uh, looked upon us and said, "Here are two people that can uh, handle." some adversity, and uh, we, our son, uh, when he was 15 months old, we, we learned that he was a victim of cerebral palsy. And uh, here we were told he'd never walk or never go to school. Uh, so we are excited that today this 40-year-old man uh, uh, graduated from high school, won a letter running track, uh, and this is all after 12 major operations, uh, and then graduated from Arizona State. And he went to Arizona State because they had special programs for physically challenged students, and it worked well for him. Uh, our daughter uh, that we then adopted, uh, we, we learned when she was uh, in the fifth grade that she was a victim of fetal alcohol syndrome and w is unable to distinguish between right and wrong. And so she has had some Problems. dire situations. Right. Uh, but as I said, the Lord thought we could cope with that. Sure. Did she go, did she go on to, uh, to college? No. no. She, uh, she went to junior college, okay. but didn't, didn't graduate from junior college. Is she, is she now working in, does she, where, does she live in, in Illinois or? She lives in Evansville, Indiana. Okay. Uh, kind of out on her own and there's good days and bad days. Good, well, and mm -hmm. she keeps in Indiana, which is really nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Close then. Right. <laughs> well, let's move on to our, your favorite Purdue tradition, or do you have more than one, and an outstanding event? Um, favorite Purdue tradition? I, I, I think I would um, like to talk about two. Good. Um, one of them, and I say two because one of them we don't do anymore. There are traditions that others have alluded to, and I'm having been here a long time, that like homecoming and the decorations of the residence halls. Yes. And people used to go around and, and there was judging and they would announce us at the That's games. That's right. That's right. Well, my, my favorite tradition that doesn't exist anymore is what I, I always called Senior Week. And that's where um, the freshmen, uh, when they enrolled, you know, the first day they were given a green beanie and they wore a green beanie for a week. Whereas the seniors wore their senior courts, carried a cane, and grew a beard. And it was uh, uh, the fun part of it that seniors were to get as many beanies as they could and uh, freshmen were to shave as many seniors as they could. But it was just, just a fun Fun time tradition, and no one, no one ever got hurt or anything like that. But uh, um, do you still have your cords? Well, yes and no. My cords hang in the Spurgeon Hall of Spirit in the Alumni Center okay. in the section marked tradition. <laughs> I've seen that several. I mean, I have visited, but it's been a while, so I have to make a special point. <laughs> yes, I look for the Amelia things. Is what I've been looking ah, at. <laughs> right, right. Well, then my favorite tradition. Uh, that's still ongoing is commencement. I think that Purdue University has a unique dignity to its commencement. And um, as, as a trustee, you know, I, I go to Indiana University or IUPUI uh, or commencement, but where Indiana is included, I mean, it is just a free for all. And um, I think they missed something. And uh, I, I repeat the word, the, the dignity of it all, it uh, the president uh, uh, addressing the graduating class, um, it, it's just extra special. Right. And I think that's 
one of the reasons why we have such a high attendance. All right, and many, I've heard that from people or parents, the students, they really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. How about your outstanding event? You have one of them, would you like to share with us? Well, I, um, I would share a couple there. Good. Okay. One of them I've already touched upon, and that's uh, the Gott Corporation. And I think that um, from a business standpoint, uh, the most significant business event for me and one that just uh, really kind of set everything off for the future. Uh, I mean, I went to a company where uh, I, I didn't have a nickel and a bank loaned me some money so that I could buy in. And then over time, as I said, we, we grew the company uh, many-fold. Uh, uh, we, we went from fifth in national market share to first, went by Coleman, went by Igloo. Um, then to take the company public and have so many successful people uh, because of that, uh, selling it to, to Rubbermaid because we needed a great influx of capital to take it on. Uh, the result of all that was just a, a great event and one of which I'm very proud. And so I, I would have to talk to that one. Good. The other one I would mention is, is just a little different. Um, my father, when I was 10 years old, uh, as, as a part of the birthday celebration, took me by the hand and took me to, uh, there in Columbus, Indiana, the local golf pro. And he said, this is my son, and he introduced me, and I want you to teach this young fella how to play golf. And thus started my love of the game. But more importantly, and, and very importantly, uh, all through my high school years, all through my college years, uh, my father and I played golf every Saturday morning at 8.32 and there were two other business associates of his that rounded out the foursome. But I had been able to develop enough skill that they, my handicap was such that they'd let me play with the big boys. But the fact that my father and I got to do that together, that was special. Right. Over a long period of time. Over a long period of time. Right, yes. Any questions that I haven't asked or any closing? I'll leave it up if you want to make any comments or that you'd like to share? Well, I, I would perhaps conclude with um, a reiteration of my love for, for Purdue. Mm -hmm. um, what all it's done for me, but what I see it doing for others today. And Purdue is just a super educational institution. And going forward in the 21st century, it has repaid. been, is, and exactly. will continue to That's be. That's right, exactly. Thank you very much. This concludes. Thank you, Mr. Spurgeon, very well, much. Appreciate it. My delight. That. My pleasure. <laughs>